Here, I'm going to show you how you can change your Reynolds number and redo your calculation and get the new results uh, for the, for the um, different Reynolds number while also retaining your original calculation. If I go to Workbench, I will right-click on Results and I will select uh, Duplicate. And I will say, you know, I will, let me make the Reynolds number 400. So I'll say the Reynolds number is 400. And um, I can change the title here to make it explicit that this is for a Reynolds number of 800. So you can see the geometry is a reference and the mesh is a reference. So the, it's just using the original geometry and mesh. And the setup, it has been copied. Let me start Fluent from Solution. So I'll right click on Solution and say Edit. And I usually prefer to start Fluent from Solution because it loads up any data that I have, um, any solution at the cell centers, for instance. And, um, and so to change the Reynolds number, if I go to a slide from the pre-analysis, if everything else is constant, the Reynolds number scales as the inlet velocity. So if I want to get a Reynolds number of 400, I should make the inlet velocity to be half of that, 0.05. So I'll go to boundary conditions um, and double click on boundary conditions, highlight, highlight inlet and say edit and change that to 0.05. Okay, so now I've changed my Reynolds number and I need to redo the calculation for the new Reynolds number. So I will reinitialize the, the solution and current data, okay, discard, yes. And then I'll run the calculation. Okay, the aggregate mass momentum imbalances and energy imbalance have, have fallen below 10 to the power of minus three, but I want to you know, go down to um, residuals of 10 to the power of minus six, like we did originally. So let me change that. So the tolerances, and as I mentioned, this impacts the linearization error. Um, so I want to go to a lower level of the linearization error. Okay, so about 319 iterations and all the imbalances, aggregate imbalances or residuals have fallen below 10 to the power of minus six. And I can go to, and, um, and here I need to re-enable it to transfer the skin friction. So it didn't keep that. It dropped that. Okay, so I say, hey, you know, transfer the skin friction coefficient to the, um, to the post processor. And that has, you know, for that you need the right reference values, right? Um, which will be used for non-dimensionalizing the wall shear. So it's going to use density and the velocity reference is going to be 0.05. So that'll give me the right non-dimensionalization for calculating the, the skin friction coefficient. It's not going to affect the wall shear, but it's going to affect the skin friction coefficient. Um, and then I can go back to the project page and say refresh to bring in the new results into the post processor. And then if I say edit, Okay, request license, the license is with Fluent. And then um, if I go back, if I double click on the fanning friction factor, I see that now it's 0.04, which is, um, so in the fully developed region, the fanning friction factor is 16 over RE, and RE is 400. So 0.04 is right. So that, that looks right, and um, that's all you need to do 
to um, to redo the calculation for a new Reynolds number. So I'll just save the project. Say request license. 